fights of Bellator 61 were the first, the bonus, and the last fight. Vitor Fiana versus Brian Rogers was a pretty good fight. Rogers had a lot to prove and so did Viana, but Rogers was the one who made the best of the situation because it didn't work out too well for Viana. He kept trying to get takedowns and he kept getting hit with knees and Rogers slowly but surely seemed to be pulling ahead in the fight and uh, eventually Rogers was the one who got a takedown. He landed a hip toss into guard but instead of staying there he just jumped right back out of it because he decided he'd rather be striking and he was winning with the striking anyway and uh, it all ended with uh, under a minute left as Rogers threw an outside kick and a right hand that hurt Viana and then he hit a flying knee that just absolutely wrecked him and the fight was stopped. The official time was 4 minutes 14 seconds of round 1. Our next fight was Giva the Arm Collector Santana versus Bruno Santos. Santana did have a good attempt at an arm bar in the second round, and eventually that got to him because Santos had a dominant third round, took him down multiple times, was in a little bit of danger from a leg lock right at the end, but Santana couldn't get it. The judges scored this 30-27 and 29-28 all for Santos. We had a bonus fight, Jeremiah Riggs and Trey Houston. This one went the way of Houston, who transitioned from a full mount to an arm bar and forced Riggs to tap out. So for all you fans of Jeremiah Riggs from Tough Enough, I hate to disappoint you, it did not turn out in your favor. Then we had a fight that I consider a little controversial, both for what happened in the cage. In the second round, Vasilevsky was really taking over with the striking and hurt Victor O'Donnell badly and was just absolutely dominating him in the last couple of minutes of the round, just rocking him with shots over and over, and uh, O'Donnell managed to survive. But to me, that was a 10-8 round. And the third round, he knocked O'Donnell down and just pounded on him, basically, for the last four minutes of the fight. And at one point, O'Donnell got up, but he was a walking zombie. His hands were down. He had no defense. So to me, that was two straight 10-8 rounds, but all of the judges gave it 29-28 to Vasilevsky. And if those rounds weren't 10 8s, I don't know what is. I know 10 8s are supposed to be rare, and Herzog probably could have honestly stopped that fight at any time in either the second or the third round. Michael Falcao fought Norman Parisi, and there was some genuine heat between these two guys. They didn't like each other at the weigh ins, they didn't like each other in the fight. And in the second round, when Falcao started to hurt him, Parisi was smirking at him and saying, bring it on, even though he was saying it in French, the body language made it pretty clear what he wanted, and Falcao was more than happy to oblige him, and Falcao was able to land a lot of good shots, but there was a lot of drama with both guys throwing late shots after the bell in the second and the third round. Ultimately, though, it did not make a difference for Parisi because he just spent too much of the time on the bottom taking damage, and even when he did sweep to a takedown in the third round, it, the amazing part was Falcao was doing more damage from the bottom. He was throwing hammer fists on his back. Again, to recap, all of the fighters advancing in the middleweight tournament tonight in Bellator 61 are Brian Rogers, Bruno Santos, Slava Vasilevsky, and Makiel Big Rig Falcao. Then we move over to the Ultimate Fighter 15, which just finished live. Dana White flipped a coin. Uriah Faber won the coin toss and chose to pick the first fight rather than the first fighter. So in order, here are the guys that were picked. Cruz picked Justin Lawrence. Faber picked Al Ia Quinta. Cruz picked Sam Cecilia. Faber picked Cristiano Marcelo. Cruz picked Miles Jury. Faber picked Darren Cruikshank. Cruz picked Mike Rio. Faber picked Jill Proctor. Cruz picked James Vick. Faber picked Michael Chizza. Cruz picked Vink Fischel. Favor picked John Kofer, Cruz picked Chris Tickle, Favor picked Andy Ogle, Cruz picked Jeremy Larson, and Favor picked Chris Saunders. Right after the commercial, Favor immediately calls Cruz a bald faced liar. He's upset because Cruz said something in an interview about how his parents helped him buy a gym, and he says that's blatantly not true, and his dad is very pissed off. Cruz apologizes and says, I wasn't trying to attack your family. I'm sorry I upset your dad. However, 
I'm not going after families, but I'll say anything I want about you because I'm fighting you. <laughs> They're building up the drama quite well. Then Faber gets to pick the fight since Cruz got to pick the first fighter. So Faber picks James Vick from Cruz's team and he picks Darren Crookshank from his team. Then we get a little bit of a situation in the house because Michael Chizzy's father passed away from cancer and he gets a phone call and gets yanked out of practice. Chizzy has a decision to make whether to stay in the house or whether to drop out because it's too much to deal with. He goes and talks to Cecilia because they were training partners and the closest thing he has to a brother in the house, which Cecilia says himself, and they talk it out, and eventually he goes and talks to Dana White and says, I want to leave for the funeral, but I want to come back and fight. And Dana says that's okay and lets him do it, so he goes and takes care of his family business and says his goodbyes to his father and comes back, and when he comes back, there's about seven minutes left on the show until live fights, but obviously this is all time edited together from earlier in the week. So we get the weigh-ins right before the fight. Vic is 154, Crookshank is 155 and a half. They announce two five-minute rounds for these fights and a third round if it's tied and we need to settle it. And it didn't go to a third round. It didn't even go to a second round because on a takedown attempt by Crookshank, Vic hit him with a right knee to the jaw and he was out cold. So cold that Herb Dean made him lay there and told him not to move until the doctor had a chance to look him over. The official time when announced was 2.16 of the first round. So Dominic Cruz, as the winner, picked Justin Lawrence, his first draft pick, and then he offered a chance for Faber to pick his opponent, even though he had control of the pick. Dana White was just absolutely dumbfounded by this. Faber looked at his team and asked them, you know, who's ready to fight? And a lot of them said, you know, blah, 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 blah. But nobody really jumped up or raised their hand or sprang to action. And I guess Cruz was finally getting impatient with it. And he said, all right, I've got to pick Cristiano Marcelo. So that's our fight for next week on the Ultimate Fighter Live. It will be Justin Lawrence from Team Cruz versus Cristiano Marcelo from Team Favor. One more time before we wrap up the Friday's five minutes of MMA, these are the teams. Cruz has Lawrence, Cecilia, Jury, Rio, Vic Pichel, Tickle, and Larson. Faber has Iaquinta, Marcelo, Crookshank, Proctor, Chizzy, Kofer, Ogle, and Saunders. And already eliminated from the competition is Crookshank, who got beaten by Vic.